Basically, there are a lot of people in the system and they aren't robots, we can't tell them what to do. So we have to worry about uh, what their needs are and, uh, and their wants and how satisfied they are with the system. We have to understand how they're going to use the system so that we can predict the demand for proposed infrastructure. And we have to figure out how to nudge their behavior into more sustainable and uh, behaviors that will be, lead to an effective transportation system. So behavioral modeling are the statistical methods we use to try to model behavior. We collect information on how people travel and we try to fit statistical models that explain that. And then once we have these models, we can do what if analysis. We can ask questions, you know, how will travel change if we put in a bus rapid transit or build a highway. Well, it's a really exciting time for travel demand modeling in general. There are really important issues about how to design our infrastructure system. And there's also a big opportunity that we're in the world of big data. There are new data sources coming online all the time with smartphones and sensors and apps. And so um, I think bringing these things together, we're going to come up with even new and better tools and also cheaper to develop. In developing countries, one of the biggest issues historically has been lack of data and also resources to develop these models. But the good news in this new data world is that it's getting cheaper to collect high quality data. And I think that will help a lot in terms of bringing these methods to infrastructure planning. The value of time is probably the most important concept in behavioral and travel behavioral modeling because in transportation, often people are choosing between faster and more expensive modes and cheaper and slower modes. And so it's a trade-off between cost and time. And the models, actually, the statistical models will estimate that trade-off for us, figure out how much people are willing to pay in order to save an hour of time. And so that's one of the ways we can also check and see if our models are working well. And, um, and uh, it also varies in the population and the models will recognize that as well. Typically what we're trying to do is get people to drive less to make this system more efficient and productive. And um, there are a lot of reasons why people drive a lot. You know, there are uh, access to housing and jobs and also lack of transportation alternatives. So on the planning side, we can try to improve those alternatives to give people better alternatives to driving. And then on the behavior side, there are ways we can nudge behavior. So pricing is one of them. It's, we can price modes more expensive, but that's, um, that's difficult. It's hard for people to take and it, there are equity issues. But there are also softer nudges we can do, just trying to get people to be more mindful about travel, recognize that when they travel, they use resources, time and money and um, calories also, their health benefits and also pollutants. And so if people can be more mindful and recognize that there are both individual implications and societal implications, and that there are other ways to live that could be more uh, sustainable and lead to higher quality of life.